Okay, so far we have talked about demand. How do we get the demand curve? What generates the negative slope of the demand curve? We talked about the income effect. We talked about the substitute effect. And I just want to put some things here as a reminder. First of all, let's remember that demand and quantity demanded are different. Okay? So, for instance, we have here the law of demand, which we have discussed in class, which basically establishes this relationship between the quant what, it, what is the relation existing between quantity and the price. It is a proportionally um, inverse, in, inversely proportional relation. Both of these factors, you have a higher price, you will have a, a smaller quantity demanded. Okay, it is always important to remember that the law is the law is higher price, a lower a smaller quantity demanded. Okay. The demand curve, which is what we generated, is all of this relationship between the quantity demanded, which you may see over here. This is the quantity demanded. And of, of a certain good and its price. Remember that at any time when we're working with uh, a demand curve and later with a supply curve, we're talking about one specific product. For example, this is a graph for Coca-Cola. This is a graph for uh, Oreo cookies. This is a graph for McDonald's burgers. Uh, it's a very, uh, it's a one graph per product. We're talking about a certain good or a certain service but only referring to that good in our graph. So, what do we get? The relationship, the relationship between the price and the quantity will be a negative slope relationship. Each of the points that we obtained in exercise in class that make the curve are quantities demanded, and they are relative to a price. For each price, there will be a specific quantity demanded. All of the curve is considered to be the demand, and we will mark it with a D. We will mark that line with a D. Let's look at the at the graph over here. Okay, as we have the curve, all this is formed by these little points that are the price, and for each price, there is a quantity demanded. For a price, there is a quantity demanded. Okay. Notice that the negative slope of the demand curve we see here is similar to that of marginal benefit. The more we consume, the less benefit we, we perceive. That gives our willingness and our ability to pay. Also, it describes, over here we have in the price, it's the opportunity cost, which is the relative cost, which is the money cost. Okay? It's important that we keep in mind, uh, always keep in mind that, uh, as we already evaluated it in class. Okay? So it's important that we get those. So we have the curve is demand. Each of the points that make this curve is the relation, the specific relation of a price, a certain price, and a certain quantity demanded. As the price changes, what will change is not the demand. Look at this. The demand is not moving, but the quantity demanded. So the price will generate a change in the quantity demanded, not a change in demand. And that is called the movement along the demand curve because our point will move on the line, will move along the curve, along the demand curve. Remember, this is really important. It is, it will only move, or, or sorry, if it, the price of, a, of the product we are talking about changes the quantity demanded will change. However, if we talk of a price of a different product, it may be related somehow. So we have to evaluate it differently. Okay? So, movements along the demand curve are only relative to price of the same good you are graphing. So if we're talking about Coke, we're talking about the price of Coke. If we're talking about Oreo cookies, that is the graph about, we are going to talk about the price of Oreo cookies. And that is how the quantity demanded changes. When the price 
changes of the product, when the price of product we're talking about changes, the quantity demanded will change. When f factors other than price, also called non-price variables, change, then the demand will be the one that changes. Okay? So we have here a change in the price. How does that look? We move along the demand curve. We move from our original price yeah, and original quantity demanded to a different price, for example, a lower price, a larger quantity demanded. From here, a higher price gives us a smaller quantity demanded. So, change in price of the good we are talking about in here will give us a change in the quantity demanded. If we're talking about other factors or the price of a product that is not the one I was talking about here, then we may be talking about a change in all of the demand, that is all of the curve will move. But if the only thing that changes is the price of the good I am graphing or the good I am talking about, then the only thing that happens is that the quantity demanded changes. What are some of the f other factors that could change? What are the non-price variables that could generate a change in demand? Please notice this, a change in demand. In demand okay? It's important that we, that we uh, always notice that difference between the quantity demanded and all of the demand curve. There are many factors that influence our buying plans other than price and that therefore our buying plans are represented by, by that uh, demand curve. The demand curve represents how we relate price, the opportunity cost, the money cost, to uh, the quantity demanded. If our preferences or if our buying, buying plans change, then our demand curve, our original demand curve will move. Remember, we set a certain demand curve for a specific point in time with a certain number of conditions. And we consider that everything remaining the same, that will be our demand curve. Ceteris paribus, that will be our demand curve. What are some of, the th of these factors? The prices of related goods, okay? which, uh, which uh, if you click in each of these uh, as they are shown, you will be able to see videos to how each of these works. Uh, it depends on how they are related to our good. A substitute good or a complement good will generate different effects on our demand, on the demand of our original good. The expected future price. So you have the, pro the demand for the product today, but if you expect the, f uh, uh, the future price to change, you expect that in the future the price will change in any sense, it will be higher, it will be lower, then you, your buying decisions will be altered because of that, even if the price right now, the, even if the price today stays the same, as well as the prices of related goods, even if the price stays the same, the, the price of your product, if the price of a related product changes, it may change your buying decision. Your income, which generates two kinds of products. You have normal goods and inferior goods, which we'll talk about, just click uh, in this section. Population will also change demand, and finally, preferences. When there is a change in demand, we are saying that the whole curve shifted, the whole curve changed, the whole demand curve moved. In Spanish we say, se desplazó. So we have a shift on the demand curve. If we have an increase in demand, we will move the curve to the right, which means it, go, it goes away from the zero. It goes farther away from the zero. If we want to represent a decrease in demand, we will move it to the left, because that would mean that it is getting closer to the zero, so it is decreasing. Put it here in the in the graph. So we have our original demand, which we will name demand one yeah, for our product. Let's say it's Coca-Cola. Okay. And if there is any of these factors, which we will explain later, that causes 
a decrease in demand, then we will move this line to the left, closer to the zero. And we will call that demand two. However, if the contrary is true, if some any of these factors generates an increase in demand, then we will do the opposite. We'll move demand one to the right, farther away from the zero, and generate a second uh, a, a demand different from the original one. Please notice this. Let's say that the price stays the same. Okay, the price of a product. So I have Coca-Cola and it costs, I don't know, 20, 30, 20 pesos. Okay? It costs 20 pesos. If any of these things happens, which is different from the price, the price will stay the same for Coke. The price will stay the same, but one of these happens. Let's say the price of Pepsi changes. So demand for Coke will decrease. So demand, the curve is now here. It was here. And now it moved over here. So what happens? You have the price. It did not change. The price of Coke is the same. But what happens to the quantity? There is a change in the quantity demanded when all of the demand changed. But what happened is that, in fact, all of the different points that show the relation between price and quantity all of them moved because of an external condition that made our product more desirable, less desirable, okay? That made, that altered the willingness of people to acquire it. That altered, the, in, in general, the relation between the price and quantity. If at one point people were willing to have these, uh, these quantities demanded to these specific prices, they may have less of that in the future, a lower, they are willing to pay a lower price for the same quantity or they are willing to pay a higher price for the same quantity. So if you click in any of those you will be able to uh, see how does each one work.